What's up guys? Welcome back to Vanover Machine and Repair and in today's video we're going to show you how to remove a broken bolt from this head and the customer made it a little bit more fun for us because we have an extractor uh, and part of a drill bit broken off on the inside of this bolt so it'll be extra challenging. Let me bring you in close and show you what we're going to be dealing with specifically. Taking a closer look at the head, this is a 5.3 liter LS head from a Cadillac CTSV. These heads sit opposing each other uh, at like a 30 degree angle and an intake plenum comes in and clamps across these four intake runners. And there's four bolts per side and the broken bolt that we need to extract is right here uh, on one of these center bolts. Taking a closer look at the bolt we're after, the customer went in there and drilled it off center and then came behind that with an extractor and broke the extractor off in the head of the bolt. Extractors are very hard, so that just makes our life a little bit more difficult. If you're following along at home and find yourself in a similar situation, I would encourage you to think twice before proceeding. Bolt extractions can be relatively straightforward if you have the right knowledge and equipment. Sometimes you can get in there with a hand drill and drill out a bolt. Sometimes you have to take it over to a milling machine and use a carbide end mill to take care of it. And sometimes it's as simple as welding a nut on the back of the broken bolt and spinning it out that way. But knowing which method to choose just comes with time and experience. So if you're in doubt and you're not comfortable, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time and money by just stopping and reaching out to a machine shop and having them bail you out real quick then trying to break extractors and taps and all sorts of stuff off and uh, making your life a real difficult. So with that being said, let's jump over to the milling machine, get it set up and we'll show you what we got to do to get this bad boy out. One thing that a lot of people don't realize when it comes to machining, unless you're a machinist, is that work holding and fixturing is a large majority of the time you spend when you're machining a part. This scenario is no different. Customers will come in all the time and say, hey, just drill out that hole. It should only be 30, 40 minutes, no problem. And they're right in a perfect world where you can just walk up to a machine that's already set up and do it. But in this case, I had to tear down a job that was already set up and I was lucky because this fit in the vise so I didn't have to remove and retram the vise. But by the time I angled the head and pulled the ram out, I quickly realized that we do not have enough travel to complete the job in this manner which is totally fine, we'll get it done. But I need to bring the head back vertical, I'll retram it in. We are gonna have to remove the vise, which we have to retram in when we're done with the job. And we'll probably have to get this set up on some angle blocks and jimmy around with it to get it in the right position. At the end of the day, we'll get the job done and it'll work out perfectly, uh, but you gotta put that time in, especially on some of these more unusual shapes where you have angles and flats and you're trying to line everything up. So with that being said, let me get this set up, but I wanted to take a minute and just show that sometimes something isn't quite as easy as it seems. We got the part set up and rigidly clamped. This back face where the valve cover clamps is 45 degrees away from the angle of this hole. So we got the head trammed in to match that. Now in terms of the bolt spacing, what we did is we took a five millimeter drill, put it in backwards. That drill is the drill tap size for six millimeters. And we went around and just kind of plunged that drill bit down and tried to see if there was a numerical spacing that made sense by plunging this in, moving on to the next hole and so forth. And what we found is there is about 4.395 inches between each hole. We also noted that this piece is clamped in the mill about 10 thousandths off. So this hole is minus zero on the Y and when we come over to the far hole, it's minus 15. So we figured out that when we jump to this hole, we need to accommodate about minus three to four to account for that uh, mispositioning of this part in the mill. So on this hole here, we've already zeroed off of this hole. We're gonna come over our 4.395 and then minus three or four and now we've identified the center of that hole. Sometimes you can center find off the counter bore, but I didn't want to count on that. 
Um, sometimes, depending on the way they machine these, those may be sort of offset. I think this is a little bit more accurate way to do it, but it's not always possible to reference a hole off of another hole. Sometimes you just gotta look at it visually and do the best you can. So let's switch out to our carbide drill and get in there and start uh, pecking out that extractor. All right, we're gonna come in here with a 3 16 end mill. It's gonna be a little hairy, it's carbide, it's two flute. I prefer four flute, but I don't have any four flute in this size. Quarter inch would work, but it's a little oversized for our tap drill size for the helicoil, and I'd rather be undersized than oversized. Um, so we're gonna try this out. We're gonna go with a high RPM, and I'm gonna feed by hand so I can have all the feel that I need to be sensitive. And we're just gonna come in here and gently peck and see if we can make any progress. So we're gonna run a very high RPM, 3,000. And we're gonna do the best. I don't know how easy this is gonna to be to see. Slow is the name of the game here. All right, it looks like we're into the extractor. Just being very gentle. There was something. Seems to be drilling a little easier now. All right, I'm gonna switch out to a quarter inch. There's like a slight counter bore before the actual hole. And I'm gonna come in there and just kind of clean that up. All right, there's two counter bores, one is the large one. So we're just gonna come in here and just kind of clean up some of the, the junk. That's it. I'm gonna zero the DRO on my quill. Okay, maybe a little bit more. That's good. All right, here's a second counter bore. By hand, speed up the RPM. There's the extractor right there. All right, we're gonna come in here with a pick. And there is part of the extractor, just fell out. Come down and clean this up. Now that we got all that hardened tool steel out, we're gonna come in with our drill bit for our helicoil. I'm gonna get some lubrication. Drilling good, but just get some anchor lube in there. And there we are, we're through. Here's a look at the helicoil kit that we got from McMaster Car. In our kit, we had 10 helicoils included. All the helicoil is is a spring with a little tang on the bottom and you install it, break off the tang, and this spring gives you threads on the inside of the desired size. So in our case, it's M6 by one, but they sell these in all different sizes. You have a driver tool, which matches the helicoil. In our kit, we got the plastic mandrel, which I rarely use, a drill bit that is sized for the tap, and a tap that is paired with the size of the exterior OD of the helicoil. We will be using a punch to break off the tang, but you can also use a bolt. There's a couple different ways to install these, but they're all pretty similar. And uh, each way, who you know, do whatever sort of suits you. We already went ahead and drilled our hole, so we have the correct size hole. So next we're gonna come in here and tap that hole, and then we'll be ready to thread in the helicoil. When you're tapping this hole, you wanna make sure you're nice and straight. Doing this in the mill is good because it keeps the positional accuracy. Ideally, we'd use a tap wrench and a spring center like this, uh, but the back of this tap is square and it doesn't have a divot for our spring center, and we don't have room to use a tap handle because it would hit this area here. So we're gonna be using a socket adapter. This is a Lyle tap socket, and we're just using a little collet uh, holder and mill holder to kind of center up and we'll keep the ratchet centered 
and we'll keep some downward pressure on this to get us started and we'll come in here and we'll tap this nice and straight up and down. You could also power tap this, but seeing as though the top of the hole is pretty bad, I wanted to go by hand so we didn't run into any issues. All right, I think we're in there straight far enough. So I can come in here and just kind of finish up by hand. The tap handles are really nice because they can balance the effort. A lot of times with these wrenches, you kind of have effort on one axis and it kind of leans, so this kind of helps keep everything square. Once you get started in the hole though, it kind of finds its way. So we're through. I like to take it out and run it back out by hand. And uh, once I get this out, then we should be good to go. All right, we're ready for the helicoil. I'm gonna use a tap handle here because I have a little more clearance. And there's a little kind of uh, indent on the bottom of this to accept the helicoil, so we'll thread it on and then it's gonna kinda stop there. And then we will go ahead and get this installed. And when this goes in, it's gonna go in with some effort, that's normal. Just be careful. And you wanna ideally make sure that start of the helicoil is like one or two threads below the surface. So it is there, all right. I'm gonna take my tap handle off and just Kind of back this out, and there you go, it's installed. Now we're gonna take our appropriately sized punch and put it in there, and come in here with a hammer and just break it off. There it is. And here's our M6 bolt, just to kind of show. So that M6 bolt threads right in, no issues, should be good to go. We got this helicoil done and everything worked out pretty good. I wanted to run a tap through these other holes just to make sure the customer wasn't going to have any issues during the installation process. I did notice that this hole over here does have some damage, the top three or four threads. I reached out to the customer and he decided he wants to put a helicoil in there. Luckily, we didn't tear this down, so we can come back in here and just put a helicoil in there nice and quickly and everything should be pretty good. So let me go ahead and get that knocked out. We'll do that off camera and then I'll meet you over at the bench. We got the head all done and we're sending it off to the customer. Uh, we had a nice short little video for you guys this week. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.